Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just wanted to start by saying um, welcome and also to say that Catherine is unwell this morning, so wasn't able to come and to play the organ. Uh, but Doreen has graciously stepped in on the piano, so uh, we really appreciate that, Doreen, and uh, I encourage you to all to sing along. Our opening hymn is number 330. So good morning and welcome. It is great to be here this morning and to worship together. I'm looking at Joyce and Jim. If I'm too loud, turn me down. <laughs> um, or if anyone else thinks I'm too loud, you can tell me. It is good to be here and good to worship together. Our service this morning is from the Red Book, the Book of Common Prayer. And we begin at page 67. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At the end of page 69, And I think this one's important for us to listen to, given what our readings are for this day, and pray them on our hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, 
The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and to walk in the way of his commandments. Whoever, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the readings. And just a reminder that our readings are in our leaflet if you'd like to follow along. first reading is from the 11th chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, and it is Peter's report to the church in Jerusalem. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying out to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. And this happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who was called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our psalm today is 148, with the refrain, Alleluia. Alleluia, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all you angels of his, praise him all his host, praise him sun and moon, praise him all you shining stars. Praise him heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rules of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Alleluia. Our second reading is Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud noise from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so also you should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. I think you figured that out before I said it. Um, so today we get, in our Gospel reading, you know, we're on the fourth Sunday of Easter, but we're kind of going back in time in terms of the Gospel that we're hearing. So what we get from John is a part of Monday, Thursday, really. It's a part of when they gather together, 
break bread, Jesus washes their feet and gives them a new commandment. And I love this commandment because at first I was going to say it's like the golden rule, but it's not quite like the golden rule. It says that you love one another just as I have loved you, you should love one another. And that commandment always rings a little more true than you should love your neighbor as yourself. And the reason for that is I often find we're pretty hard on ourselves and we don't love ourselves that well sometimes. Anyone feel that, agree with that? Maybe, yeah. But the kind of love that God has is a different kind of love. It's more than we could ever ask for or even imagine sometimes. It's a love that's not captured in our English language, but I'm sure you've heard of before. It's called agape or agape. It depends on how you pronounce it. I always pronounce it incorrectly because I'm not great at Greek. However, what that love means is it's a love that surmounts all else, that no matter what happens is there, is steadfast and strong and true. It's a love that God has for us, and we're to have for God and to have for others. It's a love that never ends and that no obstacle can defeat, and it's a love that is based on servanthood. And so the readings kind of frame what that love is, and we only get part of it. Um, John goes on in the rest of the chapter and in the next chapter to try and tell about what's going to happen and what he's asking of his disciples. And to tell about what kind of love that is. Because when we think about it, we have different understandings of love, right? There's love for your sibling, love for your parent, love for your partner. Are they all the same as what we think of as love with God? Maybe, maybe not. But somewhere we're supposed to have that love for all. So what is that love? That's the kind of love where I'm going to answer it partly, but I'm going to leave some space for you to explore and to think about. But it's a love where you have Jesus gathered with his disciples, knowing that a disciple is to betray him, knowing what's going to happen, knowing that he's going to suffer a really tough death. And what does he do? But he breaks bread. He shares in fellowship in this beautiful moment, and he washes their feet. No, I'm sure you've heard it 101 times, but just in case you haven't, washing the feet of someone sounds maybe icky today, but back in the day it was something someone lower than you would do, maybe a servant. Uh, and it's not someone in a high position of respect would do for those lower than them. And Jesus is trying to say something about love in that. God's love isn't about who is mighty and best, it is about humility and looking at whoever we meet with love and compassion and especially those the world or us might think is under us those are the very people we are called to serve and to love the reading goes on and it's the first time i read this this part before it goes on it this part it says that uh, i'm only with you a little longer you will look for me but where i'm going you cannot come and the first time, we, I hadn't read it prior to Wednesday, and Brenda had read the gospel in our Wednesday service. And I thought, where you are going, there I will be. Where I am going, there you will be also, was what I thought was going to come. But it says, where you are going, I cannot come. And that is because this love is framed in death and resurrection. So where you are going, I cannot come is about that death, that pain, and that overcoming of death, of where Jesus has to go. But then, like if you go a little bit to the next chapter in John, you get the whole reading we always use at funerals that's beautiful and comforting, which in my father's room there, are, in my father's house there are many rooms there. I was going to put mansions in there. It depends on what translation you're using. So there is that comfort of God has space for us, but right now I'm taking on that pain, I'm taking on that weight, I'm taking on those things, and even that is not going to the be, all, be the be-all, end-all. So love is framed within death and resurrection. Jesus offers his life willingly, without violence, 
and says, I love you, and goes and dies and says, you know, even death is not going to stop this love that God has for us. Even death. And so there's resurrection in a couple of days. Yeah, we have to wait. Things don't happen the way we like them to or want them to. But we have to wait, and then Jesus comes again, and they, they kind of forget about this whole conversation that's been had because they're so scared for their own lives and sad that they've lost Jesus. And Jesus comes again and says, like, you know, death doesn't even stop this love, this agape love that I have for you, that God has for you. And even, you know, I'm going to ascend to the Father, and there'll be a place for you. But in the meantime, even then, I am sending the Holy Spirit to be among you and to live in you and to be around you. So God doesn't leave us behind. God is in us. God is around us. And so that love lives in and around us. And we're asked to live into that love and to offer it to others. And to believe in and to rely on the Spirit for guidance of how it is that we are to love. And that gives me comfort. And especially this reading where it says again, just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Do you ever have a hard time loving someone? No smiles. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we have grief and pain, and sometimes we've been hurt. I'm reading a really good, uh, by reading, I mean I'm listening, and hoping maybe in the fall to do a study about forgiveness. And um, Desmond Tutu has a book on forgiveness that was recommended by someone in the diocese. So right now I'm, I'm listening to that. And it's very real because he talks about forgiveness in terms of it's not just a quick and easy thing to do, but it's something we have to strive for. And so is the same with love. So how do we love one another? It helps me to remember that I have to love as God has loved another person. And I try to think of the other person and try to see them through the eyes of God, not always through the eyes of my hurt or my pain or the conflict that exists. And it helps me to see every person I encounter as a beautiful, wonderful child of God, fearfully and wonderfully made. Am I perfect at it? No, none of us are. But it's what we strive to do with the help of God in our lives. And when we do it, people will know that we are God's disciples if we love one another. So I guess what I want you to say, feels like a short sermon today, but what I want you to think about is how might we look at one another with the eyes of God? How might we trust in the love that God has for us? That's hard to do in itself, too. And trust in the love that God has for each and every person. How might that transform how we encounter people, how we talk with people? And is there anywhere where you might need to ask God for a little more love and a little more help? And perhaps, like our second reading, God can make all things new. Amen. We turn to page 71, and I invite you to stand as you are able, and we'll say together the creed. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Our offertory hymn is number 403. In the blue book, Let All Things Now Living. You may sit, kneel, or stand as we pray. <clears throat> On this fifth Sunday of Easter, 
In joy and hope and gratitude, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace around the world, we pray for the people and leaders of Ukraine and all countries that are in turmoil. Lord, protect the Ukraine. Give all who are affected strength, courage, faith, and hope. We pray for those who fight, who fight for democracy and freedom, for all armed forces, especially the armed forces of Canada and those deployed around the world. We pray for the safety of our parishioner Jason and the crews of the HMCS Halifax and Montreal. May a spirit of respect and reconciliation grow among nations and all people we pray to the Lord. We pray for all who live in fear, injustice, prejudice, violence, hatred, and are surrounded by war and the threat of violence. Be a shelter to all who may need your peace and comfort. May we all live in acceptance, reconciliation, and love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who govern and lead all nations of the world, especially for Elizabeth, our Queen, as her Platinum Jubilee is celebrated. Justin, our Prime Minister, Tim, our Premier, Michael, our Mayor, and all who govern and represent us. May they feel your guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are affected by illness and challenges, especially those in our book of intercession and on our hearts and minds today. May they feel your comfort of healing and steadfastness for all who care for the sick, frail, elderly, and those in need. May their actions be a source of comfort and care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially, may light perpetual shine upon them and may their souls rest in peace. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. May they feel surrounded by your love and compassion. We pray to the Lord. For all who lead and guide us in faith, for Archbishop Linda, our primate, Bishop Sandra, Reverend Katie and Dylan, Brenda, honorary assistant, and Jane, retired clergy. In the worldwide Anglican communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Cathedral of All Saints, the very Reverend Paul Smith, Dean, and Francis, the Reverend Heather McCachran, Deacon, and Ray, the Reverend Ray Carter, Deacon, and Heather, the Reverend Dr. Helen Riding, Assistant Priest, and David Little, the Reverend Dr. Davina Davis, Honorary Assistant, the Reverend Ronald Harris, Honorary Assistant. May your wisdom and strength be their guide. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Victor Steele, Wayne Stickney, Stephen Stoyles, Jennifer Simpson, and Oliver Simpson Stoyles and their families and loved ones. We pray for our St. James family and all congregations as they continue to safely gather. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear the prayers of your faithful people. Grant our request as may be best for us. We ask this and all the prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I realized we were getting a little ahead of ourselves. I was ready to pray. 
Um, but we forgot the offering and to pray over the offering. <laughs> if you want to grab it. I forgot to pray over it, too. It happens. Is A-OK? Okay? Okay. Here you go. Yeah, I should have got that before I did the prayer. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We continue on page 76. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. And we do earnestly repent and are heartedly sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn on to him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come on to me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any person sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, 
and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son and his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of their benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
body of Christ hidden in my heart. Body of Christ hidden in my heart. Body of Christ hidden in my heart. Body of Christ hidden in my heart.
We continue on page 85. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all the faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And I invite you to stand as you are able. We say together, Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. In the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to Reg and Harry for greeting people as they come in, to Joyce and Jim for making sure people online can join us, for the choir and Doreen for playing for us today, kind of last minute. <laughs> um, you did a lovely job. And for Trish and Brenda and the readers and just everyone gathered together. And hopefully I didn't forget anyone in the list of thank yous because I tend to. But I'm just grateful is what I'm trying to say that we've come together to worship. It takes a community. So there are a couple announcements coming up. The first one is that I'm going to be away tomorrow till Wednesday. Um, so please contact, we have all three wardens here today, Natasha or, or Jim or Reg. I almost pointed at Reg and called him Jim. Got really confused that time. Um, but contact them if there's an emergency and uh, the Reverend Michelle Bull will be covering this time for emergencies and Brenda will be covering for services so she'll be here on Wednesday for the Wednesday service. Please mark in your calendar June 4th and June 5th. There are two celebratory days. It's a community fun day happening on Saturday the 4th so there'll be all sorts of activities around. We're planning to have it outside. If the weather, if it does rain uh, or we get bad weather, we will have it partly inside, but a modified uh, thing where we'll be asking people to mask. Um, but anyone's welcome, uh, all generations for a ton of fun. And our Mother's Union and Melt team are working together, which is really fun. 
Uh, donations are welcome though, so if you want to bring some cash, the rest is free. But donations are welcome uh, at the tea for our Mother's Union and also in support of PWRDF. And then on Sunday, they're going to be Take Yourself Home a Tea Party from the Mother's Union with homemade goodies and all sorts of treats that you can um, grab on your way out and offer a donation if you wish. And that's partly to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, because that is the weekend that uh, most people are celebrating it. Just kind of incredible that she's been the queen so long. Um, just a reminder, thank you to those that have been continuing to give to the Tickle Trunk. Some uh, personal care items, especially we've got like lots of stuff, hats, mitts, socks for next winter, but maybe um, if anyone gets a chance, sanitizer, sunscreen, um, maybe some personal care items that would be fine any time of the year. Toothbrushes go pretty quickly. Uh, just something to think about. And of course, canned goods, especially canned meat, go so quickly. Just uh, a reminder for those that are giving and any, you know, donations are welcomed. You can put more than that. You can put jewelry, you can put cards, you can put sweet messages in there if you so desire. Um, today, I can't, I, I announced it last Sunday and I put it in the newsletter, um, but today is the last day for offering something up for, um, to send in a care package to Jason. Uh, so Jason is on the HMCS, on the Halifax. The acronym, I keep mixing up the letters, but on the Halifax and will be gone probably till sometime in July. So um, he sent on his address and we all thought it'd be nice to send something from our parish, so we're going to send him a care package, and um, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. We're going to postpone, I forgot to ask Brenda, unless we're doing an in-person laughter yoga for Tuesday, yeah, uh, but there'll still be meditation on Monday. Hmm? Pardon? I'm not able to open it on Tuesday. That's, pardon? Alice is going to do it. Okay, great. Alice is going to open Zoom. Zoom is weird. Um, if you have an account, you can only open from that account. Someone else has to have a different account. So if you want to go to Laughter Yoga, Alice is actually going to open it. So please contact her for Tuesday. We really appreciate that. Are there any other announcements or things that I might be forgetting that someone wants to make note of? What about celebrations in people's lives? Nothing? No one has a birthday, anniversary, something exciting happening? I made it to the news last night. That was my excitement. <laughs> I, say, I say this, with, take it with a grain of salt, you're probably not on TikTok, but there's this woman in, uh, who's a nurse in... Um, in lower to middle Sackville, I'm not sure. Anyway, her name's Michelle Hare, and she started making these funny videos of contemporary rap songs, but I shouldn't guess her age, but she's old enough to be my mother at least, I would say. Um, and she started making these videos while doing like classic mother slash granny type things around the house. So doing puzzles and tea, you know, making supper, doing some baking, and she'll be singing all these ridiculously funny rap songs along with it. And she started doing it um, for her sister who, who spent a lifetime um, living with cancer and illness. And last August, her sister died. So she started making them for her sister for fun, and it blew up and she became famous on TikTok. Now, I know it might not resonate with our congregation, but growing up in the 90s and 2000s, there's a lot of those old school rap stuff that I would have grown up with. And so it resonates with me because I've heard all this stuff as I grew up, and, uh, and she does it in such a funny way. So yesterday, um, I gave blood for the first time in memory of her sister on her team, and uh, CTV News showed up. <laughs> so I ended up on CTV News, which was more excitement than I thought I was going to have on Saturday. <laughs> oh. 
All right. Well, we shall sing our recessional hymn if there is nothing else. It's number 309. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Our liturgy is ended, but our service is just beginning. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.